How do you do, everybody? We are going to talk about light, a little bit about the sun, um, but a lot about light and how our body uses light because our body does use light. That is what our skin, that is why our hair has color. That's why our skin has color. It's why our eyes have color. Color actually means that light is being absorbed, okay? So if you look at something that's white or clear, then that means there's no light being absorbed. So this hat right here, all of the light is bouncing off of it, and what we see is white. So light's coming in from the sun because there's no lights on in here, and well, there is a spotlight on me, <laughs> but it's coming on into this hat and all the light is bouncing out and we see it as white. Where if I look at my hair, most of it's dark, black. Actually, I can go on another tangent of what the actual color in hair is. It's actually all a reddish color. But anyways, it's, it's a dark, dark brown. What that means is that most of the light is actually being held in my hair. And what I see when I look at it is basically the opposite of white. So dark colors mean that they absorb light. Light colors or white colors means that it's reflecting most of that light back off. So when you think about your skin, you think about tanning, you think about melanin, that word melanin actually means dark. That's what the mela from melanin means. That, that etymologically, mela means dark or black. So the melanin in our eyes, our skin, our hair is made to absorb light and give very little of it back. That's why it's dark. And so we get taught in school that melanin is a protector of light. And it is true that the more melanin on the skin you have, the more able you are to, uh, to digest light without it burning you. However, melanin is not a protector. It's not a coating on us to, to block light. Melanin actually absorbs light, hence the dark color of melanin. And so once again, melanin is in our eyes, it's in our skin, it's in our hair. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how to harmonize with light because light is all around us and light is outside. And we are beings of light. We are beings of earth. We are beings of nature. And so we are made to harmonize with everything out there primarily the sun. We are not made, our bodies are not made to not be able to handle the sun. The body is made as a piece of technology that harnesses the power of the sun. And it does that with melanin. If you guys have any questions, drop it in the question. There's a little question mark thing at the bottom of the screen or leave a comment. Actually, everybody leave a comment right now if how many hours it what is it wednesday let's say in the last week in the last seven days including the weekend how many hours were you outside when i give lectures about this in person i usually ask it's usually on the weekends right on a saturday or a sunday and i usually say how many people here have been outside more than five hours this week and usually 40% of the people raise their hand. So less than half of the people raise their hand that they've been outside more than five hours in the week. So we're talking about less than one hour a day. Most people were coming to my lecture to talk about the elements, light, earth, air, water, ether. So these are already people that are interested in the power of nature. So we got one person saying buckwheat belly, Betty says 12, we have a two, we have a 14-ish, we have a four, we have a one, but it's cold here, and they use a red light. 40-ish, Odette Blacklock, 40-ish, which is, you know, if you're gonna be working 40 hours a week, you might as well be actually in your nature 40 hours a week. Five to six hours, six, 30-ish, 
think about before buildings. Think about before glass. Think about before cars. All of these are modern conveniences, but they do block us from the light, which is why it's necessary for somebody like me to come on and talk about what we actually use light for, how it actually does get into our body. So I started with melanin. Melanin, mela, means dark and it's absorbing light. And so light is absorbed with melanin. Now there's two main types of melanin on our body. There's eumelanin, which is the dark stuff, and there's pheomelanin, which is more like the reddish colors like of our nipples. And there's also a third type of melanin called neuromelanin. So many people don't know about neuromelanin, but melanin is inside of our brain, our brain stem, and that's called neuromelanin. There's also melanin being used in technology. And so they're using melanin in technology. It's a new technology that you're just figuring out, but melanin apparently surprisingly, apparently to scientists, melanin is extremely good at transferring electrons, transferring electricity. That's what the job of melanin in this new field of technology is being used for. And so if melanin is in our brain, how is the primary job of melanin, which is what we're taught in school, to block the sun. Melanin is not a sunscreen. Melanin is a sun absorber. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about how that happens. Source for this. I'm, I'm, I'm your source. I'm telling you melanin, melanin is dark, dark colors absorb light. These are, these are facts, right? You can Google melanin in technology and see that it's being used for transmitting electrons what I'm gonna say next, I don't need a source for, it's just a simple fact, you can Google it, you can ask, my father's an electrician, the difference between an electron and a photon, there's one main difference. The one major difference between an electron and a photon, again, I don't need a source for this because this is just how it is. The major difference between a photon and an electron is that an electron has mass a photon doesn't have mass. So they're essentially the same thing. They travel both at the speed of light, which there's many sources for the speed of light, all of which could be wrong because electrons actually don't travel and neither do photons. They merely get activated along the chain and we witness it as a speed, but it's more like electron, electron, they just get activated. They're already there. It's Electrons and photons are abundant throughout our whole reality. And even though there's an illusion that they're... I just got a call, so... I, maybe I lost it for a second. So there's an illusion of it traveling, but it's more of just like being, being activated down the chain. All right, so I've said nothing so far that needs a source, everybody, right? Melanin comes from the word black. Uh, dark things are dark because very little light bounces off of the dark thing. Okay? Electrons or photons are essentially the same thing except for electrons have mass. Melanin. There's pheomelanin, eumelanin on the outside of our body. There's neuromelanin inside of our body. There's melanin being used in technology to transfer electricity, electrons. So now the question is, what does the melanin do on our body? So there's a book, here's a source for you. There's a book, it's called Light Medicine of the Future. It's written by Dr. Jacob or Jared, Jacob Lieberman, I, I believe. But I'm second guessing myself, it might be Jared. But I think it's Jacob Lieberman. He's an eye doctor, okay? Doctor of eyes and ophthalmologist. And so, in his book, there's a very awesome graph that I usually have pulled up on a, on a PowerPoint. But coming off of our eyeball, there's two cords. One cord, 
one chord goes to the occipital lobe and one chord goes to your, it goes to your inner brain. It goes to your hypothalamus, it goes to your pituitary and it goes to your pineal gland, all right? So one chord off her eye goes to occipital lobe foreseeing, one other chord goes to these other glands, hypothalamus, pituitary, pineal. Hypothalamus is essentially like determining rest, digest, your autonomic nervous system choice, parasympathetic or sympathetic. It's basically helping you decide what mode to be in. Your pituitary gland, which is also using this light information, is determining essentially almost all of your hormones in your body. Your pituitary gland is your master center of hormones. And your eyes, which have melanin, which is grabbing light, bringing it to these glands, which are making major decisions in your body. How much fat to retain. What types of hormones, your digestion, all of that's being determined by light information. Then it makes its way to your pineal gland your pineal gland. Your pineal gland, we all know if you're on here, it's likely that you may associate the pineal gland with a third eye. What do eyes do? They detect light, but more importantly, the eyes are just a tool and that tool brings the information in and we interpret light as visual images. And so the pineal gland is receiving this light from our eyes and it's known as the third eye because the pineal gland is what is active in deep states of meditation. It's active in dreaming as well. So when we dream, you guys may know, and I learned in psychology school that there's different phases of sleep. So just sleeping isn't the same. There's different phases we go through. And one of the phases we go through is called REM, rapid eye movement. Now, rapid eye movement is exactly what is happening when you are dreaming. And when you're dreaming, where do you think those visuals come from? It's coming from the light that we've transmitted through melanin into our inner brain, into the pineal gland, which is doing what? Scientifically, conventional scientifically, what is our pineal gland doing? The book that I just mentioned is called Light, Medicine of the Future. And that's kind of like a play, playful title because it's not medicine of the future. It's medicine of the always. We've always known it was medicine, but nowadays we have a society that is very anti-sun. We are literally an anti-sun civilization where we block the sun. I was actually hoping we've got, I've got a huge, you see that? A huge view of the sky right here. And I work right over there. There's a couch and there's, it's a little bit messy, but I'll show you guys. There is a couch and on that couch is a little grounding pad somewhere right there. My dog sleeps on that, but that's my workstation. And so, well, I also have an office right down the hallway, but I come in here and I, I sit on that couch and I, and I work and I put a EMF blanket over me with my phone on a tripod on my, above my chest. I'm grounding my feet and then I'm watching the sky and I see planes flying around and dumping aerosols and all this stuff. And what ends up happening, the sun's up there somewhere. On days that it's very misted, we'll call it, there's a lot of trails. First of all, a few days later, it starts raining, but then there's a haze over the sun and I watch these streaks turn into clouds and then it turns into a, a cloudy day when it was like this before. But uh, why am I saying all this? Because of the anti-sun civilization. We're in an anti-sun civilization where it's actually encouraged to block out the sun. It's encouraged on an individual level and then that makes it so that we're all afraid of the sun where we don't care if there's clouds artificially seeded into the atmosphere. back to the pineal gland. So the pineal gland makes a couple major hormones. 
It makes serotonin. So serotonin is also, most of it's made in the gut. And serotonin's like a, a happy mood hormone. And serotonin in the pineal gland gets produced and then the pineal gland then makes melatonin from serotonin. So melatonin sounds a lot like melanin, doesn't it? So melatonin, etymologically speaking, comes from the words mela and tonin. And so we've already established what mela means. Mela means dark or black. And dark and blackness absorb light. And tonin comes from the word, the same word, tonic. So melatonin, which gets produced by our pineal gland, which is taking the light information from our eyes into hypothalamus, pituitary, pineal gland, it's producing serotonin, then melatonin. Sera means serum. So it's producing a serum and then it's turning it into melatonin, melanin tonic. So the dreams in rapid eye movement, the pineal gland is producing melatonin, melanin tonic. That melanin tonic goes through our body and it does what? Deep sleep is what regenerates us. It what, it's what makes sleep restful. It's why we wake up in the morning fresh. If we have our deep sleep interrupted, even if we sleep a long time, if our deep sleep is constantly interrupted and we do not get that surge of melatonin, we do not feel rested in the morning. It, it's, a, it's as if we weren't sleeping. What we know of as deep restful sleep means lots of melanin tonic that was released into the body. Why am I saying all this? Because where does that melanin tonic come from? For those of you who've been outside for 30 hours, 40 hours, like we're seeing, that melanin tonic is made from Father, Son itself. For those of us who are inside in front of screens, in front of light bulbs, your melanin tonic is, is like the fast food light. It's, and I say fast food because fast food is, there's not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 cars I can see in, in, on, in and out down there in the drive-thru. And it's not nearly as packed as it normally is. But there's an in and out down there and there's 20 cars in the drive-thru. That's fast food. What that food is, is made for is taste and a little bit of nourishment. But if there was a McDonald's down there, then that's like basically only taste. It's empty calories. Why is it empty? It does have calories, but it's all unbalanced. It has energy, it has nutrition, but not in the correct proportions that our body needs because that is very unnatural. It's got a lot of chemicals, a lot of GMOs. It's, it's empty on a lot of things and it's high in a lot of things that we don't necessarily need. It's the same thing with the lights in our houses. This is the fast food version of the sun. The lights in our houses are made for seeing and that's all that they're really made for. There's no thought of how this light is impacting the body. All the lights in our houses are primarily focused on is how can this help people see the best? That's it. I mean, there's differences in hues. There's warmer tones and, and brighter tones and even daylight tones, but none of it's really f filled in with full spectrum light unless you actually care about growing something in your house like plants. Then you can go to the plant store and get more full spectrum light. But the lights that we have above our dinner table, the lights that are coming off our computer screen, the lights that are in our bedroom, that's all fast food light made for your seeing, pleasure only, not for your melanin tonic production. And so this is all not to incite fear or anxiety that you're not getting in outside so much, but this is all to bring harmony to the sun because we live in an anti-sun civilization. We live in an anti-sun civilization. And 
the alternative voice around this has been snuffed out, silenced, may I see, say, even suicided out of reality, forced suicide out of reality. One of my friends was just suicided a few days ago um, because he was serving a type of food that uh, to Los Angeles, and he was an advocate that uh, was helping a lot of people and against the mainstream agenda. Now, am I going to go so far and say who suicided him? It could have been himself. It also was a benefit to the agenda if he wasn't around. So there is a motive for him to have been suicided by somebody else. All right, the sun is the sun. Any takeaways, any questions about what I said so far about light coming in, melanin grabbing it, melanin coming into the body, determining all the hormones, all the decisions, the mode of our body, and then the body producing melanin tonic that then recalibrates the body every single night. Light is information. Did you guys know that the spectrum of light changes throughout the day? Okay, so that's another thing is that the light bulbs in our house don't shift throughout the day, but the sun naturally shifts. And so you get a varied spectrum of light throughout the day. And depending on which parts of that spectrum hit plants, for instance, plants will actually grow taller with blue light, like towards the blue end of the spectrum and grow wider with red light. And that's, that's a really simplified version of what, what, it, what, that, what, it, what that is. It's not necessarily wider, it's more like fuller, but plants even respond to the spectrums in different way. Animals determine when they mate based on the light information. Trees also determine if they're going to fruit, trees, fruit trees don't necessarily fruit every single year, but they're using the information from the sun to make that decision and also the weather. So somebody's asking about talking about the LED light effect. Can you relate this to what Dr. Cruz, Jack Cruz talks about? I can't because I haven't really uh, absorbed a lot of his stuff. It's, it's, he's a little abrasive for me to um, look into. I've been following him for seven or eight years and, I, and I've heard him on a, like a podcast and the man is probably the most knowledgeable person about light. Um, but there's so much information out there that I'm looking into that ancient technology not having to do with light but having to do with like the energy and how and how light gets reorganized into shapes and patterns that there's so much stuff about light that I haven't actually got into his his network so much but I do invite everybody who's interested in the topic of light to to check him out um and you'll see what I'm talking about uh it's 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 a little bit uh, and I'm sure I'm abrasive for other people too I hear that I hear a lot of people say like I can't listen to you because it's a little, uh, it's not in alignment. And so I definitely hope to even meet him one day and, uh, and, and get into his stuff, but I haven't yet. So I can't really relate it. But somebody's talking about the LED light effect. So LEDs blink, 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 hundreds of times a second. And you can't really see it because your eyes only process a certain amount of uh, frames per second. If anybody knows what that amount is, I don't want to misrepresent what that amount is, but our eyes work similar to a, a uh, um, like a camera. And so it's, it's, it's taking all these snapshots and then we reorganize it into a, a video. So it's essentially like a movie camera where we're taking all these snapshots. And that's actually how our 
perception of time works as well, which is a really interesting conversation. If I remember, I'm gonna go into that about how we perceive time. And this will explain, all right, I'm gonna not go on that tangent yet. I'm gonna finish up with LED. So if you guys, when I'm done, go into a dark room with pretty much any light because they've made incandescent lights illegal, I believe, in the state of California and some other states. You can't sell them. When I owned gyms for, uh, so this is like 10 years ago, they came into my gym. This is more than 10 years ago. I want to say like 2012-ish. They came into my gym and they say, hey, we want you to replace all of your light bulbs with these LED lights. Let me know how many LED lights you have and I'll bring you back a box full of LED lights to change all of your lights. They last forever. You're not going to need to change them again, but... We want you to have these LED lights. They're more energy efficient. And so they essentially like forced every single business in downtown LA to change their light bulbs and put in LED lights. And LED lights are flashing and your body's absorbing this light information and it's trying to recalibrate itself around this flash. So you guys remember like an incandescent light bulb has a little filament and that little filament through the electricity is glowing. This is basically like glowing electrons, glowing electricity through that filament. And that's what light used to be in light bulbs. But now LEDs are they're just like flashing like crazy. So as I was saying, go into a dark room and videotape, you're going to see, you can put it on slow motion videotapes even better. You're going to see the lights flash, flat, they all turn off at the same time. Like you could have multiple lights on and they're, they're turning off, off on, off on, off on, off on. And that's very disorienting to your body because your body unconsciously to you is literally calibrating everything. Our conscious mind can process about 120 bits of information. So what that translates in like street language is 120 bits of information is what it takes to have two conversations at once. Because a conversation takes about 60 bits of consciousness. So think about having a conversation with somebody. You're using about half of your conscious power having a conversation. If something happens over here, you can kind of figure it out, right? You can kind of be paying attention to two things at once. 60 bits of conversation here, something else. Now imagine having two conversations at once. You're maxing out your conscious capability. Conversation, you're talking and listening to your mom. You're talking and listening to your dad. You're having two different conversations. It would be very difficult for you to also take a ball and throw it up in the air because that's going to be maxing out your capacities. Yes, you can practice this, but just to give you guys an example of how much information our consciousness can actually pay attention to because it's expensive. We have to pay attention to it. It's very small, okay? As compared to the millions, like two to 10 million bits of information, bits of processing that our body is doing on every single moment of the day, all right? So our consciousness can only register about 120 bits, but there's multiple millions of processing power worth of bits of information that our body needs to do on a moment to moment basis. What I mean by that is our eyes are, we can be flickering our eyes around looking to those, to those two conversations, but we're not consciously calibrating and focusing our eyeballs while we're doing it. We're standing up. All of the musculature and the fascia in our body is taking balance. Right? There's something that's throwing electricity, biophotons through our body, body to keep the balance. The heart is pumping precisely, not really pumping, it's resonating, it's, it's vortexing uh, a frequency which is then calibrated with the flow of blood cells, hemoglobin through the body. And those hemoglobin are all carrying oxygen and determining do we release the oxygen or keep the oxygen to keep the oxygen balance in the, in the blood very specifically within this range to keep this human alive. There's all of this stuff happening in our body that requires millions, 
hundreds of thousands of times more processing power than our consciousness is capable of registering. So I'm saying that because we're like, oh, well, th those lights aren't really damaging us. It's because you don't see them flickering, but our body does. And our body has the capacity to feel that, and it does stress our body out. And there are studies, prisoners, school children, they love doing studies on these, these people where they, they have different types of light bulbs and they can see the negative impacts of attention deficit disorder and, and kids not being able to focus based on the light bulbs that are used. Also, what else are those lights in workplaces? So if you have real trouble working, that could be an issue. So one answer of this, of how to deal with this, is if you are working on the computer a lot, just go outside. If you're working on your computer a lot, just go outside and work on your computer. You can even go in the shade. You're going to feel so much better being outside with your feet on the ground. I'm not even talking about grounding energy, but it's mostly that the light of the sun is going to fill in the gaps of the light of your screen because the light of your screen is just very broken. And if you can just fill in the gaps with the light of the sun, then it helps. Windows, unfortunately, also break light. So even though I say that I'm working in here, it's mostly I go outside. I can show you there's three tables. There's three tables I have in, in our backyard. There's two over here and there's one over here. And that's because the sunlight moves during the day. And based on where the sun is, we'll eat at a certain table or I'll work at a certain table based on where the sun is. And rather than like moving one table around, I have three tables. I still need to shift them a little bit, but having three is better than one. I've got three desks out there that I'm in the sun. So just going outside will alleviate a lot of pressure and strain on your eyes. Do you use anything to protect your skin when you are outside for hours? Good question, Sarah Voss. I have a sensation of how much sun is appropriate for me. Just like you all have a sensation, you have a calibration of the temperature of the water that you take a shower with, right? Imagine if you couldn't feel temperature, if there is something broken in that mechanism and you didn't have an ability to sense temperature and you're in the shower and you're in the shower at 177 degrees and you can't tell that it's scalding your skin but you're just there. Why, what would be an example of you not being able to tell 177 degrees is too hot for you? Maybe you've been lathering some, some potion, some magical mystical potion that the drugstore sold you that doesn't allow you to feel temperature so that you can be in the shower longer. And so you've lost your sensation of the actual heat. And so you just take showers for 12 hours in a row because you don't have a sensation of the heat. That's not good for you, right? A lot of us have done that to ourselves with sunscreen. We've erased our ability to sense the strength of the light because we've lathered some stuff on us that stopped us from burning. When we do not burn, we have no capacity to do something that's very primarily human, which is the process of pattern recognition. Pattern recognition is one of those things that has advanced human beings higher up in the evolutionary scale if we talk about evolution as a real thing, in the evolutionary scale of species on this planet. The ability to pattern recognize. Sunscreen stops that. We do not have the ability to sense how much sun is the amount of sun that is correct for me. So I'm an advocate of stopping the sunglasses, stopping the sunscreen, go outside and feel your way in. How much feels right? You might get it wrong. You might burn the first time because you were outside 20 minutes longer than you should have. But guess what? You are human and you will prevail because you have the ability to pattern recognize. And the next time you go out, you will adjust and you will calibrate and then it's over. You will never burn ever again in your life because you don't rely 
on the magic mystical sunscreen that you bought from the drugstore that told you, put this on your skin and you can stay outside longer. No, you will have an ability to calibrate. And so we all have this ability to calibrate our relationship with the sun. It's the fact that we wear sunscreen potions that stop the burn, that stops our ability to recognize our need. Sunglasses do the same thing because sunglasses make, they convince our body that we're in the shade. And when our body's convinced that it's in the shade, it doesn't, and again, I'm going out on a limb here on this part. Most everything I said so far has been accurate, but on this part, I'm going out on the limb and saying I may be wrong here. Um, our, eye, our skin, the melanin, the melanin in our skin and just our skin in general has a capacity to interact with the sun and it is a technology. And the more sun on our body, our body's going to calibrate, okay? Just like um, clothing, if we've got clothes on our body, if we've got heavy clothes, skin tight clothes on our upper body and loose baggy clothing on our body, on our lower body, our body actually um, gets confused and it doesn't know where to send heat and where to protect from the cold in that circumstance. That's why if you go into indigenous cultures, they wear like one uh, membrane of f fabric or fur on their body. They don't have like sections like we have, where it's like got cuffs that are elastic and elastic underwear that's skin tight, covered with a pant that's, that's airy, and then skin tight socks and loose shirts. That's very confusing to our body. But if you go into people that are living with nature, they've got one membrane on so that the body can regulate to temperature. The same thing, as I'm saying, on a limb, I'm suggesting that if we're putting sunglasses on our eyes, our body's getting confused. All of those millions of bits of processing power, it's getting confused because a major component that's telling our body what to do in terms of processing hormones and regulating how active the melanin is, that's all getting confused because your body thinks it's in the shade. Thanks for the question about how, do you use anything to protect your skin when you're outside for hours? So I guess the, to, the point of that is that use shade if you need to be outside for hours, clothing, trees, and also there is dietary things that act as like internal sun protection or sun ability to harness the sun. One of them is called super xanthan. Actually, uh, DM me about that. It's, it's made from algae because I can get you some at a discount. But it's made from algae that is the same algae that tropical fish eat. And, and flamingos eat. And flamingos are in like very, very intense desert type heat, 120, 130 degrees. And they're very bright. And so this algae is what gives the flamingos that bright color. It gives the tropical fish that bright color. And it also gives me my bright color. My, I should say dark color, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an essence that you get when you consume certain foods and there's foods that work, and I hate the word sunscreen because it's not really accurate, but it works similar to what you would think of if you thought of what an internal sunscreen is. Also dark greens do the same thing because plants are made, it's the essence of a plant is to take in sun light through chlorophyll, which is, enabling the process of photosynthesis, but chlorophyll is very similar to hemoglobin. So instead of uh, sodium, we've got iron in hemoglobin. Okay, how to get the proper amount of sun in colder climates? Go outside. The good thing about snow is that it's reflecting all the light. So you go outside in a snowy environment, it, 
the technology of us is so beautiful, everybody, and it works outside. It works outside. When it's snowy out and you go outside, the sun's hitting every single one of those crystals of snow and it's reflecting it almost in infinite ways. And a lot of it's going on to you. So you actually need less sun. You need less time outside in a snowy environment. If that sun's coming through, it's reflecting off that snow and it's like a mirror. It's coming into you and you're absorbing it all. What's the secret of your hair? It's amazing. I know what my hair does for me. It's not just for looks. This is solar cells. These are solar cells. And more importantly, there's other things in the light, in the cosmo, in the cosmic energy that's coming in, that's being grabbed by melanin. And I'm in harmony with that. And so I have an intention to have solar cells that do their job. I'm not putting chemicals on this. I'm not putting chemicals on this because I disrespect it. So essentially, I don't disrespect my hair. I don't blow dry it. I don't leave it out while I'm on a motorcycle whipping in the, in the, in the wind. I also don't really wash it that much. I don't brush it that much. So there is a little bit that I do disrespect. Like it probably should be untangled a lot more. Like it, it, it's, it's pretty tangly. But I think the main thing is, is that I respect it. I understand its job. It's, 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 it's an aspect of self. I understand that. And so I intend on having it. Now, with that said, I'm also not attached. I'm growing it out mostly because who knows if it's ever going to be this long ever again in my life. I, I don't know. It might start leaving me soon. And, I, and I'd like to be able to witness myself as it's designed. And so my hair is down below my butt, most of it. And some of it's going down like mid-thigh level, which is uh, when I look in the mirror, it's incredible to see myself as it's designed. And I invite everybody, at least one time in your life, quit shaving your legs, quit plucking your eyebrows, quit shaving your face. I did for five years. Nothing here got, got shaved for five years. And I don't grow anything on the sides, but I did just start shaving recently, the last year or so. Um, but it's a beautiful experience to look in the mirror and see yourself exactly as you were designed. All right. Questions, questions, questions. I'm just looking at questions. There's a lot of people saying stuff. Appreciate everybody for... Someone said, I feel physically ill under LEDs and fluorescence. Yes, you will. It's, it's like we already, as a society, know that. But the agenda is going in one direction... And so those sorts of studies or those sorts of teachings don't get out. This is why quieting the mind is so valuable. I'm loving this raw reality. So what can we do about it? What can we do about it? What are we talking about? Maybe the anti-sun civilization? Start designing your life so that you are more in harmony with your nature. Nature isn't something we go into. Nature is something that we are. And when we prioritize that, we actually prioritize going outside just like we do eating. And that's what I do. And that's why I live in this house that has a backyard that is south facing, that's facing south, which means that the sun, I can see the sunrise, I can see the sunset from this house. And the sun essentially is in my backyard all day long. And the beach is right there, which is plenty of sun, very little blocking of the sun. There's, I'm not living in a valley. When we start intending on being our natural self, our reality starts shifting and we start designing. Does that mean that we may need to make more money? Yes. It does. Just like you, when I was 18 or 19 years old, my first, my first reason to ever make more money was not so that I could buy a bicycle or a car or rent a better place. My first ever intention to make more money for myself was so that I could start eating organic. And I had to make some sacrifices. 
I was going to start eating organic apples and oranges because those are the cheapest things to get organic. And I think maybe even broccoli. I was eating a lot of broccoli back then and, and spinach. I think it was like that was my choices. And then, and then uh, my animals as well uh, was going to be natural. Organic was way too expensive. And the sacrifice I had to make was no more eating out. I couldn't eat out anymore because I remember that I was like, I could go to a restaurant and easily drop 40 or 50 bucks. This is like not now a time prices. Now, nowadays the prices are like a hundred dollars per person. But um, back then it was like 30, 40, $50. I'm going to stop doing that. And I'm going to start eating these things organic. And I started aligning my life. And then it was like, I want to never be able to think about the price of food. I just want to be able to buy the best. And then my, my level of income jumped to that. So rather than trying to fit in your life into your income bubble, that's what a lot of us are taught to do. We make this amount of income. Let's try and fit our life into that. I think that that's an amazing thing to do, especially for budgeting and investing. You have your budget and you allocate. Okay. However, what worked for me for most of my life is looking at my income bubble, looking at my reality bubble, and then saying, how can I get my reality way bigger than my income bubble? Like, what can I do to make it so that my life costs more? Because then that's going to force me to grow this income level. And that's essentially mean that I just get the best of everything for myself. That's kind of the side effect of it. And that's how I've lived most of my life. I don't think it's for everyone, but just in part, since I'm hosting this live, that's how I've sort of related with money in my life is to grow the income bubble. I grow my concept of what I deserve. And what the people around me deserve. Because eventually I had gyms. And it was buy the best of everything for my clients. What is the best of everything? Hey, Solar. Come here. Want to say hi to everybody? Come on. Come on. Solar. This is Solar. So uh, we were talking about light. Then we were talking about... Why was I even talking about... um, Oh, what can we do is the question, right? What can we do about all this? Figure out how to have a life where nature is a priority. And you will figure it out. Just like you figured out how to feed yourself. Just like you figured out how to have the amount of video games that you need. Just like you figured out how to have that TV. Just how to, you know, those of you with the 65, 75, 85 inch TV, you figure that out. It's, it's pretty easy how to figure out how to get on the earth and how to get outside more. It's actually way more easier because guess what? All of that's for free. It's just a question of comfort. Do you want to go outside in a place on earth where it's 37 degrees most of the time? Do you want to go outside on a place on earth where it's cloudy most of the time, raining most of the time? Do you want to go outside in your own yard? Maybe you need to not have that apartment anymore and there's some adjusting. But once we understand that that is where the magic's at and we actually gain more happiness out there, more harmony, more of everything comes from out there. Everything. Attractiveness comes from out there. You guys know this. This is why things like tanning salons exist because you actually look more attractive if you are sun-kissed. If you're sun-coated, if you are carrying the light you're smarter everything is better does a visor or hat disrupt pattern recognition um so the reason why i'm wearing this because i just came from tennis and i normally don't wear hats um, but i do like visors because not it's not it's not covering a lot of my hair but in tennis you actually do need technology to see because if you're serving and throwing the ball up right in the sun or if the ball is coming up this does have some blockage factor. And I tried playing tennis with like five fingered shoes and no visor and it just, it just doesn't work. So however, I am drawing my line at sunglasses because one time I was like, maybe I can play better with sunglasses. And I put them on and I swear to you, within five minutes I started feeling sick to my stomach. Like I wanted to puke. 
And so I, I don't really use sunglasses. So someone's asking about zinc. I just don't know. I don't know what to say. Zinc may be healthy. It, it might not be a chemical agent that's disruptive. It may be a natural sunscreen. But I'm a favor of what's best. And I, my, my version of what's best means that we have our own ability to harmonize with the sun. And we determine how much sun is right for us. Okay, technology, what about zinc? What do you use to wash your body clothes hair? Mostly just water. You just use the pads of your fingers. Um, yeah, I, I do have some stuff that I wash like my asshole with um, and my, my other important bits on my body. But for the most part, it's like skin brushing. You can skin brush. Actually, we'll do another live on personal hygiene. Um, but right now we've been talking about light. So I just want to just close the container on light, make sure I answered any questions on that. And I think that we'll probably do the next few episodes on the natural elements like earth, air, like what air is. Do we, do we know what air is? It's something that literally we do when we first come here onto this dimension, we take a breath of air. A lot of us got smacked and then we cry, but we take that, that breath of air and then we, on the last breath, that's, that's the bon voyage. So uh, air, how do we use it? What is it? What is oxygen? How, does, how do we get oxygen? Is there anything else in there? Is there chi? Is there prana? Well, how do we interact with that? Is there other ways to get it in our body besides just our nose and our mouth? Those are all interesting conversations. So I think I'll go through the elements first and then we'll start going into other topics like personal hygiene and please send me messages uh, make a comment on this video of of topics that you would like my perspective on and i'll i'll keep note and uh this can be a, a collaboration of sorts in vancouver it's too rainy so what's the solution in these conditions well look at your mentors here what do the human garage crew do? Who they're from Vancouver, what do they do? They go to Mexico part time. <laughs> Be creative, we're humans, we're powerful. We're, we can think of things, right? If you're in a place that's cloudy all the time and you don't feel like you're getting enough sun, ask yourself why you're there. I'm from Michigan, I did the same thing. Why am I here in Michigan? Oh, I'm here in Michigan because my parents actually birthed me in California, but then they moved back to Michigan because that's where my dad's from. And so they went back there. And then after my littlest sister graduated high school, they moved to Hawaii because my dad loves the sun. So then I'm like, why would I stay in Michigan? There's no reason to be here. I'm just here because this is where I was raised, but it doesn't mean that this is where I like feel the best. The sun raw light comes from so far to give us light intelligence. Well, that's the, I didn't really get into, and I'll start making courses and stuff to get into the, the intricate details. Maybe I'll even, the point is to write a book. I'm talking about this a lot with you guys, so get me into like, uh, it's get me practice. I give lectures to practice. I have PowerPoint slides to get all my studies and everything all set up so that it get laid out easily into chapters in a book. Chapter one, light. Chapter two, air. Chapter three, earth. Chapter four, water. Chapter five, self. Because we're essentially like a sailboat within these elements. And if our sails have a bunch of holes in it, then we're not going to be able to harmonize. It doesn't matter how harmonious the light is. If we're just hate everything and see the fault in everything, there's no harmony that we're going to bring within ourselves. So the whole point of everything is to expand the self. First, you color in the full spectrum of self. You do that first with nature. It helps. It's a crutch. But then you want to make sure that you're flowing energetically. And that's with like physically movement capacity and then also emotional capacity, mental capacity, so that when you view life, you're viewing it from a full spectrum. That you have awareness of multiple perspectives. You're not stiff and rigid in your perspective, only your point of view. That's what arguments are. People are arguing with everyone because they're so stiff and they can only see things from one point of view. How limiting is that? Imagine only being able to see things from one point of view. 
imagine that. Your entire life, you only see things from your perspective. That's the only thing that interests you. That is very, very limiting. Do we need to stay outside on cloudy days? As Is it as beneficial? Again, back to pattern recognition. If that's the only day that you can get outside all month, then don't not go outside because it's cloudy. The sun still comes. More light goes through the clouds than it does in your house with all of the lights on. Inside your house with all the lights on will not even come close to match the brightness of being outside on a cloudy day. And not to mention how broken all of that light is. Okay, key sunbed safe to use. Visor is not technology. Uh, yes, it is. Same thing with tennis shoes, which I don't particularly think is the best, but tennis shoes have side support, which helps in the game of tennis. And a tennis racket is better than the technology in my hand, even though the technology in my hand is what's best. And so the visor is a piece of technology that I use to advance my capacity in the sport of tennis. It's not necessarily the best for your health, but it's the best for winning. And so even I make adjustments and compromises to things. What does your wife use or not use? Makeup, or no makeup, no perfume, no hair products. So it's no to all of those. Sometimes she wears stuff, um, but for the most part not. What are your thoughts on radium? That's an amazing question that we'll also have to wait. If you could remind me of that as a whole topic, that would be amazing. I wish I lived closer to this man. You're my idol. I want to learn everything as much as possible from you. Show up Wednesdays at noon. And I'm also on Instagram on my own channel as well. Thank you guys all so much for collaborating with me on this. Your theory of time. Somebody asked about what is your theory of time, which is another whole episode. So get, where can... If you DM me that, I'll write them down. I'll write down what I can remember. Is hot water bad for your hair? Mm, warm water is probably good. Even, even hottish warm is probably okay for you. Scalding hot, again, use your own intuition on that. Bye-bye, everyone.